Hey guys, welcome back to Five Breaks of Midnight, Quarantine Ooh. Edition. Today we're talking to Aaron Chapman, co founder of Nevada Agency Distilling. That's Smoke Wagon, baby. But before we do, I can subscribe. It really helps us out. Thanks. for joining us five drinks or midnight five drinks five questions midnight whatever comes first thank you so much for these beautiful samples i have some very talented friends and uh <laughs> yeah i think you're one of only two people in the world that uh actually has any of that uh batch number one batch i think oh. we had the guy that won the 12k uh giveaway got a bottle and besides him no, no one's ever had a chance to try it Fuck yeah! All right. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you got a barrel sample. Oh, you got the chili pepper barrel sample. Yeah. And oh yeah, you got some. You got some rare stuff. Yeah. No, I'm so excited. So I cannot wait. So, uh, which one are we drinking first? I say we start at the low, the lowest proof, you know, and and work our way up. Uh, what what I've learned. Is, you know, A, you get your palate acclimated proof, but also doing you know, side by sides is always tough. And um, and the nice thing about the way all of these are gonna be is uh, they'll progressively get oakier and have some tannins to them. So the entry level uh, straight bourbon has like zero tannins. And what I found, like when doing side by sides, if you go from something that's young to something that's old, People actually prefer the younger stuff because the first sip of that older juice, the, the tannins will be a shock. We're going to slowly work our way up to the older stuff. All right. So is that the straight bourbon uh, 92.5? Yep. All right. Yeah, that, that big... Oh, oh, you got a sample of it. You also have a big bottle. Yeah, but I was told that I have to drink from the sample, so I'll stick to the rules. All right. Oh, it's probably just to make sure we're drinking the same exact batches. Yeah. So, cheers. Oh, cheers. <laughs> mm. Mm. So, so the goal with the entry level, you know, I feel like somewhere along the way, uh, entry level has gotten like a bad sort of, con you know, bad rap, like bad connotation. Like you say entry level, you're talking about an inferior product. And it really, in my mind, it shouldn't be. It should be an accessible product. Like, everybody should enjoy it. You don't have to have, like, sophisticated palate to be able to pick out flavors. And I think uh, two things that people need to get adjusted to is, is heat and, you know, oak and tannins. A lot of people are tannin sensitive, especially, you get, that's why you see a lot of people, they tell you that they prefer, you know, scotch over bourbon. The scotch is in the used barrel. It's not going to be as oak heavy. And so this is very low tannins. But uh, I want it to be complex, so it's still 36% rye, and uh, which is the master we use for everything. And then also it's 92.5 proof, so it's not chill filtered, so it's nice and creamy. You know, it insulates your palate from the heat a little bit, but just really beautiful and delicate. And this is something that you know anyone should try and and like it. And it's funny because I'll do tasting, you know, because this is the the easiest drinking right and so people be like oh this is the most expensive one this is the best one i'm like this is the entry level it's just you don't drink a lot of bourbon so for you this is like smooth and easy and that's how you perceive bourbon. but for us who are drinking all the time we want complexity and flavors and things going on you know right. so it, it's a pretty interesting thing to see happen well excellent and, and again it it is very smooth and it's really nice so like that and it's got a great nose to it, and it's, it's Thank you. glorious. So, yeah, I just wanted a nice everyday, you know, uh, bourbon. All right. So, question one: How yes. does a guy that studied film in upstate New York end up <laughs> in Las Vegas? Oh man, that is a, that. How much time do we have? <laughs> Five drinks or midnight, whatever comes first. <laughs> 
So I did when I so my I grew up uh, mostly in South Jersey. My father and his everybody's from North Florida, and so uh, every summer we would go to either Jacksonville beaches or Western North Carolina because uh, I was born in North Carolina. But when I got done, I did an internship while I was in school and that was in Atlanta. And the producer for that, he, uh, I can't remember what happened, but he turned out not to be like a, a viable uh, contact. And so I ended up moving to Atlanta and getting a job doing uh, construct as a construction laborer on movies and things like that. I met this buddy of mine. I remember I was working on this movie called Nell, and I was shoveling all this rotting hay out of uh, off the set. And I saw his buddy. Uh, we became friends, and he was like scraping decals off of dirt, like a motorcycle. And I was like, "You ever just feel like you're not living up your potential as a human?" <laughs> And he was like, I have a, a master's in English lit. So we, we became, and he was like, and I'm scraping pick, uh, stickers off a bike. I'm like, I'm shoveling rotten hay. I mean, I don't regret any of it. I, I, all that hard labor that I did was like good for me. Um, but uh, so I ended up, I, I got my commercial driver's license. And I ended up driving trucks with him. Uh, I moved to Portland and we worked in Salt Lake City. And then after a while, I just felt like, uh, you know, because well, I was like 23, and at 23, like being driving trucks to union and everything seemed like a lot of money. And then I just, um, I don't know, the, the working, the freelance aspect and all that, it just, uh, I, I don't know. I just felt like I wanted to do more. And so then I moved to L.A. and I worked one more movie, and, and this was in 1997. And I was just like, this is not what I want to do with my life. And uh, at that time, you know, because after the, the, the Northridge earthquake and all the military bases closed and the riot, everybody left. And L.A. was this magical place. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's like if I only lived there for a year and then moved and you say, hey, what's L.A. like? I'm like, oh, man, it's great. It's so cheap. Nobody lives there. You can rent a house, you know, for 500 bucks a month. You can ride your motorcycle down Sunset Boulevard to the beach from Echo Park. There's no traffic anywhere. It's amazing. And, um, you know, so I just finally, I got to a point where I said, I don't care if I'm broke. I don't want to be at the whim of these people. I just want to go and do my own thing. And, uh, I had this buddy, we just, I, man, so I just, I opened up like this uh, junk shop with this buddy of mine. That was a lot, of, I had a lot of fun in that store. And then I ended up, um, God, I ended up buying this piece of property with someone that we both were, were basically getting set up. I'll try to make this short. Uh, it was just, we were so naive, but it just, we ended up making it work and like, uh, you know, I, I rented a, a space to flee. He, you know, from Red Hot Chili Peppers, he opened a music school in there. And then um, back when like Vice was actually like real small magazine, they did a retail store. And uh, this guy, it was really cool. But I just, um, I had problems uh, with with one of the people that I owned it with, and so I uh, I sold out. And then I took that money and opened my first bar. Which, <laughs> which I knew, which I built myself with the help of, well, I shouldn't say myself. I did a lot of the cosmetic stuff. The, the other guy that I worked with, he was a more accomplished like framer. Cause I only worked on movies, but I knew how to do all this fake stuff. And so there was two guys building it and I fired one of them. And I just like, what am I doing? And I just went and bought tools and ended up building that bar and uh, doing all like, you know, I built all these fake beams and I had to like, shape them all with an axe and everything and uh to make them look old and hand hewn and so everything was perfect because i i did it personally and that is where i met my business partner jonathan he and his wife had just moved to pasadena which was near where where i was and uh he uh, he was like this is the best bar i've ever seen and we were talking about um the bar business and everything 
And back then in LA, there was no redevelopment of Hollywood and there was no redevelopment of downtown. You had to buy a bar. You could not turn a retail space into a bar. Uh, and so I found out about this deal in Vegas and we just, I was like, well, you know, we could go look downtown Vegas and, and see what that's all about. Because apparently they're, they're creating this whole new entertainment district where there won't be any gaming. So it's going to be a unique experience where it's nothing but bars for three blocks. And we just came to Vegas and, uh, Man, I just, I felt, that was that, the, that was the end of L.A. for me. All right. I mean, two things were happening. You know, I fell in love with the desert and being in Nevada where you're free and uh, <laughs> and everything started getting more expensive and crazier in, in L.A. And so I just, you know, at the, the last few years, I mean, I sold all my bars and my house uh, years ago. So I'm trying to, you know, you try to think about timelines. Um, so yeah, I mean, probably like the past eight years, uh, I was like here, and I, I go home to LA just to deal with my house and everything, and then probably like, but but so then so that's how I came to Vegas, fell in love, and you know, back ten years ago, Jonathan and I were. Um, we were still drinking vodka and we were like we should do this here in la and i'm sorry we should do not here in la we should do this here in the u.s and the one we really liked was russian standard which was silver filtered so i tracked down this woman this russian woman in um india who got could get you a silver filtration system in the u.s now what i've learned is it's just a 30 inch sanitary filter you can put it in anything I didn't have to get a whole system made that's like made out of junk metal and has like a pre-World War II electric motor on it that's a voltage and that I've you know that I've never seen before. But uh, <laughs> so that was quite an adventure. But you know we were talking about like you know maybe doing it in California or whatever, and um, I just we both decided because that was you know. Uh, we had been coming out here for years at that point, and we we're just like, you know, Nevada is such a great uh, business friendly state. We had such an amazing uh, relationship with the city of Las Vegas. You know, everything was like, per like um, uh, personal in a good way, not like a bad way. Uh, and it just, you know, there it was like the city really would like to see us grow, and it was just everything was good and positive. And so we just decided to do it here initially uh, as vodka. And that was, I remember that summer too, because that was the summer the gas was like $5.50 a gallon in, in LA. And it killed, all the prices went up. Like everything, and, and we couldn't sell it for more money as a retailer. And I was like, man, this is like, I don't know, and I was just kind of looking towards the future, and I was like, what am I going to be, how long can I do the bar business? Are we going to open up a bunch more bars, and then when I'm like in my mid-50s, I'm going to be dealing with all these bars, and I was just like, and Jonathan was talking about doing the vodka, and you know, when we first started talking about it, both of those, it was kind of like this romantic idea, and then it was, uh, it's like, this is what we should do, and, and this is the path, <laughs> this is like, this is what makes sense. And then I, I, because drinking vodka, I was a maniac. I was crazy. Those were crazy <laughs> days. And vodka for me, I mean, you know, I'm Russian, part Russian, and uh, that stuff is like amphetamines for me. I would be out, all, especially here in Las Vegas. Oh my God, like all night, all morning, coming home, everybody's like, what do you? you do coke what are you doing i'm like no just drinking like how do you do that you know and like people would hang out with me and um you know and like everybody would fall apart just trying to hang and uh and then finally i was like Ooh, i can't do this for it <laughs> one morning i was like all right we gotta slow it down so i started drinking uh trying experimenting with, with brown spirits and i just love bourbon and uh it just turned me into a like just a gentleman, you know, I'd have a couple bourbons. I was like, you know, everyone, it's time to go home and go to bed at a reasonable hour. I'm feeling a little sleepy <laughs> and, um, 
And so people were like, well, you should make bourbon because this was, we were still, this was around like 2011. And I was like, we were really intimidated by the process. And I ended up hiring uh, Dave Pickerel as our consultant. Like Whistlepig was nothing back then. And that's what, so that's how he was making his money was consulting. And we kind of set, we set everything up uh, like we were going to distill from scratch because at that time, the way the state laws were, we could. And then we started trying to source bourbon. And in 2012, when, went to MGP. I mean, they probably had only owned the Seagram's plant for a few months because we bought stuff that was only a few months old. And when I look at the manufacturer tags on it, it still says LDI. It doesn't say MGP yet. And and I think that 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 and that was the short version, by the way. Because no, no. again, you know, like I said, my my social stalking of you, like I, I but it. it Literally, it, like you guys are, are, you are really just a guy. Like it's such an interesting story. Like your your whole story, and we'll get into it in a little bit. But like the whole just can do attitude of like, right. everything that, and I, I so admire that because I I think that, thank you. Uh, and, and again, it, your Instagram is just fucking hilarious and amazing. <laughs> and I, I but but it, it comes across that like oh I. Even to getting the coin in into the, into the bottle. Oh, I can't do right. that. Fuck you! I'll figure out a yeah. way to do that. Like, yeah. oh, we're we're gonna do this silver uh, filtration system. Oh, fuck you! Like, we'll just go. Like, yeah. yeah sometimes it it's a hard lesson to learn. You know, you you got it from India, but you could have just went and got it for thirty five bucks. But you know what? Yeah, you figured it out by yourself. You went and did right. it, and and I think that 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 whole like story of just er everything that you guys have done and just being like we're going to make some vodka and then all of a sudden you're going to be like today you're like we're going to make bourbon yeah make bourbon no <laughs> we'll figure it out. but like that, yeah, that's we'll the whole it. thing and, I, and you're not you, you're totally disrupting the category which i think is amazing and you're and you're creating such a uh like cult of following around your product, which I, I think is great as well, because I, I don't think we've seen that in in the bourbon world uh, wrapped around like somebody since Dave. I, I think you know right. they really kind of did that really nicely. But I mean, there, yes, there's bottles that people go crazy for, but I think that there's something a little bit more wrapped around Smoke Wagon as a personality, like the personality right. of the people that drink Smoke Wagon. If you're out in the gun range. You got a cigar, and you're blowing <laughs> shit up, and, and like you're you're having a good time. Like yeah, you, you should be having a good time. And yeah. that was the thing is, I just felt like everything was so serious. Yeah, it's all so serious. Like you're, these people are like selling the cure for cancer or something, you know? And it's a, it's so much fun. I mean, I get it. It's like I can understand why you would want to come across that way, especially. I mean, it's, you're drinking alcohol, which could potentially, if you're not doing it right, could be killing you or make you go blind, you know? But, uh, but and that was the thing. It was like, every, it's so, this is so fun. And every day, I mean, so, I mean, obviously there was hard times, um, but that's what makes the good times so much better, you know? I mean, you can't have it be good all the time. What would I want it to be? I mean, overcoming challenges is like, you don't really grow when everything's going great. You grow as a person when, like, you're met with adversity. You gotta, you know, right. figure out how to overcome it. Yeah, there's but, a little uh, bit of struggle in the world. So, like, yeah, it, yeah. And, but it's so fun. I mean, there's yeah, there's frustrating days like uh, a week ago or whatever when I had that like a couple weird barrels like screwed up that tank of five year, and I was like trying to figure out how to work around it. But you know, whatever. It's like that's not a real problem compared to the type of problems you can. Have. Right. you can have in the world you know yeah so um but yeah like everything pretty all everything where i thought that my life was being destroyed i was like being saved for myself you know like we had these tanks in here they never got approved i spent three and a half years trying to get those things approved if they were approved i wouldn't have any 13 year i wouldn't have had any eight year or the nine year barrels that we started with or the tank because that would have all got dumped in those tanks when they were five years old you know, if um, the state laws hadn't changed, 
I wouldn't be contracting MGP to lay down distillate for us every month, and I wouldn't have, you know, who, who knows what would have happened. Um, and if if uh, everything happened on time, um, I would never learn about blending. The whole reason I started blending was because it took so long that the eight year was beautiful, but it didn't really taste the way I wanted it to. And everybody talked about, oh yeah, you just step it down and make it a five year the way you liked when you first started. And uh, when I started mixing, I was like, well, hold up. I don't want to step it down to five year. I like the way this tastes, you know? And, and everyone was like, no, you don't want to do that. You don't want to blend eight year with young juice, especially when you have so much eight year. You want an age statement, you know, because I, I, at this point, we already had a huge inventory of barrels. It's not like I was like trying to source every time. And uh, I was like, no, I kind of want to make it taste like this. And and uh, no, I don't think anybody was doing that. You know? Yeah, and again, I think, you know, making things your way is definitely a, a kudos because, yeah, no one's doing that. But yeah, it's definitely like a, a your way kind of thing. And like who cares if no one's done it before that's why and, and that, that's the thing too is that when i go do events and things like that you know people are always like they're like why'd you do this i was like oh i blended small batch because i want to take this, this way and i live in las vegas and it's hot in the summertime i wanted something i had on the rocks da, da, da. you know and they're like no one's talking like that everybody's just saying it's all like trying to resurrect something from the past oh this is the way or found a recipe in my grandfather's shoe or did it or my heard a story that my family member made, and it's like that I mean you know whatever I don't want to say whether those stories are true or not but if you're I don't I don't know the reason for doing it unless you're trying to create something that you find, feel is lacking in the market and I felt that these flavor profiles were lacking in the market and uh, and you can only do it for yourself you can't try to guess what other people are gonna like well I, I, me, it, happens, it happens now especially there's so much fucking hype, you know? Like, it used to be like, I like this, it's delicious. And now I'm like, oh, now I'll be mixing something like, shit, somebody could have been hearing about this and they finally got a bottle and now there's all this fucking hype and they're gonna try this and this isn't, is this the best batch? Is this like, is this gonna be the thing that some guy tries it and goes, oh, fuck Smoke Wagon, they're not worth it. There's so much hype, this isn't, I don't like this. Fuck those guys, you know? And so, uh, I mean, you gotta, you can't really have those thoughts, but yeah, you know, because you got to do it for yourself. But yeah, it, uh, you know. All right. Well, that is, I think, the best answer to the, my first question ever. So, yeah, that, <laughs> should we move on to uh, drink two? Question two. Uh, let's do some small batch. All right. The one that started it all. all right. Where I discovered vintage blending. Mm. So, small batch, you know, like I already talked about, sort of the what I was trying to achieve. And small batch and uh, the entry level I definitely want to have. I mean, I don't want, it's impossible for me to have a totally consistent flavor on the level I'm doing things. So, when I have tanks that only hold 350 gallons and I can only dump seven to eight barrels at a time of each floor and vintage. There's no, I don't have enough barrels to, it's always gonna vary a little bit. Um, but this, I, I want it to be fruit forward and just have a nice big finish with some heat and some spice. So if you make a cocktail or if you have it on the rocks, it's gonna shine through and it's never gonna get water. Excellent. Well, cheers to you, sir. Mm. Woo! Ooh, this is a good batch. I was in a recent one. That is good. Damn, Boy, that's, Damn good. that's good. <laughs> that's so good. I haven't had any in a while because I mean, it's been cold enough at night to drink uncut. Oh, Damn. That is, that is good. Oh. Shit. That is, that is better than I remember. <laughs> oh. Hmm. 915, this is the batch, this is the batch I had to fix. This is the, um, this is the one that like got all screwed up and I had to try to figure out how to, how to fix it. 
Well, you did a damn good job because I, I can see it. it's fucking fixed. It's damn Oh, good. yeah. Wow. It's so funny because, you know, a lot of times um, I don't really, I'm either drinking it like in the tank where it hasn't been bottled yet. So there's still a bunch of char floating in there. And we've just proofed it down. So you're getting all this uh, ethanol heat and micro bubbles from the chemical reaction of the water and the juice. And, and then I'll try one that's like a bottle, but it's really gonna be sitting for 12 hours. So to come back to it, especially this bottle's been open and like where it's settled down. Oh man, that is beautiful. Oh, it's so damn beautiful. I'm impressed with myself on this one. <laughs> Gold star for you, sir. Like that is, it is just fucking gorgeous. So that is mm. damn good stuff. That is everything I want small batch to be. Oh. Just really nice up front. A little bit of oak on the finish. You know, like the other one had none of that oak on the finish. This, this, we're starting to get some oak. Got all that fruit up front. And, uh, whew, beautiful. Excellent. Oh, so damn good. All right. So, two. Okay. Uh, you were a production assistant on the film History Men. Oh, yeah. And so people consider you a whiskey superhero anyway. <laughs> what would be your superpower and super name, or your superhero name, uh, if you were on in the movie uh, Mystery Man? Oh man, they all have funny names, right? Yes. All right, state your name and power. The Blender. The Blender. <laughs> That's what I'm doing most of the time. Totally. Man, that small batch was good. I say we go with the uncut and filtered next. All right. Just kind of work our way up the core expressions and. Perfect. Ooh. Oh, it's so good. So uncut and filtered, there's no desire for consistency. It's just, uh, you know, because you're, you're, you're not any, uh, there's no water being added. So it's just, you know, it all just depends on where my palate's at, really. You just never know. And, um, or, or what I want to try. Uh, fine. <laughs> I know it's frustrating for people because all they have to go off right now is the ABV. But we're finally getting stickers I can put on the back label that have the batch number or name and the date it was bottled. So it's easier to keep track of, you know. That's probably the only reason I would consider doing that fall one because it'll be easy to sort of figure out which one that is. But... Uncut Unfiltered was the second one that I ever did, and I really wanted to try something that just tasted its best neat. I saw all, at that time, you know, if you saw like any cash bank bourbons, they all said, oh, please enjoy some spring water or something like that. And uh, I was like, what? I mean, I understood the point because you're starting at a pure level and you're bringing it down to where you want it, but I wanted to do something that tasted its best neat. They call that a stand-up whiskey. That's just something yeah. that's gonna make you just stand up and go woo. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah, that is. Uh, so the way this one differs than the one I did today, this is a lot sweeter. It's got a lot more, uh, you know, fruit and nice, beautiful, sweet notes. Um, doesn't finish nearly as intense as that fall one I was working on today, but still a lot of nice spices, a lot of cinnamon. Uh, beautiful yeah that it just it's gorgeous and again haven't had a bad one yet so no <laughs> I don't plan on having a bad but hopefully, just, hopefully there isn't a bad one that's what i'm saying yeah i don't plan on having a bad one but it's just, yeah it's it's definitely one of those things that it's uh and it, it kind of leads into my question three which is a lot of people are sourcing mgb but for some reason, Smoke Wagon seems to be drastically different. Is it just, like, what's your secret? Is it just because you're, you know, trying to break the rules and you're doing it the way that you want to do it? Or is it the desert heat? Or what, like, what What makes Smoke Wagon stand out so much more than just the other well, thing? Yeah, I mean, the desert definitely uh, affects the older barrels. I won't let the younger barrels stay here too long. Um, it just seems like the, the older they are, the, the more seasoned the wood is, the less wicking effect it's going to have. And so the older stuff, we it'll go up a couple points, improve, but the volume doesn't seem to go down too much. 
the younger stuff, I really feel like we get too much volume loss if they stay longer than like a few months. Um, and right now, to be honest, like with the young stuff, we're, we're going, I'm going through barrels faster than I can get them here, you know? And uh, so they don't really, eat, they, they sit for a little bit, but, no, but nothing super long. But I think it's really just having, all my barrels are racked. In, on, in warehouses, so I, I know the floor and the tier, and uh, maybe it's the way I do it, where I separate everything by vintage and floor, uh, and so <clears throat> nothing's ever pre-batched, so I'm always, and then the quality control, you know, because not everybody that sources bourbon is in control of the process. A lot of them are, are paying another you know, distillery to bottle for them. And okay. so I'm I'm in here pretty frequently, you know, making sure that everything tastes the way I want and um, figuring out the blends. The blends, I, you know, I made the one mistake <laughs> that one time of not adjusting the blend when we did a fresh barrel dump, assuming that it'll be consistent and it wasn't. But I do think that, uh, I don't. I don't think anybody's blending the way I'm blending. Yes. You know, and even what I like. I mean, fortunately, God gave me a palate that when I go, "Hey, I really like the way this tastes," a, a vast majority of people say, "Hey, I really like the way it tastes too." Now, I mean, there are people that don't like it, you know, and and I don't get offended by that because it is what it, you know. I couldn't fucking make enough if everybody liked it anyhow. <laughs> You know? <laughs> Should we move on to our, our fourth question, fourth drink? Yeah. What are we drinking? Wait, this is our third question. Oh, third third drink. Fourth drink. Fourth drink. Because, yeah. Let, let's do the number one batch batch. All right. This will be the first rare and limited to be released. Where you're the only the second person in the entire world outside of here to ever try this. All right. All right. This is uh, started off. It ended up being eleven barrels, but started off with seven barrels initially. Where I, I tried them, these were all the fifth floor eight years that didn't make it to private barrel. They weren't good enough. And when I blended them together, I was like, "Oh my god, I'm not using this for blending. This is insane." And uh, so this is what this is actually what made me come up with the rare and limited. Where I was like, "I need a way to release this." And I don't want it, and the whole problem with the wax and all that is, uh, and not and, and not having customizable label is it takes months. It takes months to get those bottles made. And this way I could just have a, like 10,000 bottles sitting around and be like, oh, here's a barrel I like. Let's get it out there, you know? And, uh, and so that. Excellent. Cheers. Oh, fuck. Wow. Yeah, that's really nice. Uh, but, but it's funny because like coming from small batching on cut, you know, it's not nearly as complex. But man, it's just got all that caramel and it's so rich and oh. creamy. And wow, that's amazing. Ugh. Oh, you could drink that fucking all day. Like that is <laughs> really kudos to you, sir. Because that is thank you. Amazing, like that I is. Didn't, I didn't do shit for this. I just was lucky. Yeah, well, <laughs> it is still. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this was just. Uh, I just was like, you know, because I, I put it in this tank, and I was like, and I just thought, I'm just gonna try this and see how it is, and uh, that this is not usually used for blending. And uh, it, it, the, the extra four barrels made it even better. Wow. Oh. Yeah, so what's the proof on this one? Actually, the last four barrels brought the proof down. It was originally like 122 and now it's 118.9. Yeah, that's what I got, yeah. But still, none of them are super like over hot. Like that, that yeah. is like the, one of the great things. Like that's still just a just good fucking sipper. Like it, it's- yeah. There's not I mean, I, two reasons. One, you know, it's not chill filtered, so it's like nice and creamy. It has has all the all the lipid esters in there. Uh, and then the other is like I, I never rotate barrel. You know, that's the thing about 
doing day one laydowns, besides the amazing price point, as opposed to buying aged barrels, um, you're in control of the, the barrel the whole time. And so I make sure, you know, because MGP will rotate their barrels. Uh, they try to convince me to rotate mine. Like, they're going to fall apart. You got to get them off those high floors. I'm like, no, no rotating anything. Everything just stays where it is. That way it's not going to get too tannin heavy. Because those tannins really uh, add a lot to the harshness, you know, in, in conjunction with the heat. So if you're rotating a barrel and you're breaking up all that char, it just floats in the juice and all the tannins get dissolved out of the char much easier because it's like little three-dimensional you know, pieces versus just coming in contact with the sides. All right, so question four. Okay. We, we talked a lot about the can-do attitude that you got, I mean, from building the bar to like, you know, like you said, like shaving beans by with an ax by hand, yeah. putting the, the, the coin in the middle because no one said it could be done and you fucking did it. it. What would your advice be for somebody starting out? Oh man, I, I would say the number one advice to anyone <laughs> starting out is there's no, there's no getting through something. You can't look at it like as soon as we accomplish this, everything's going to be okay, or we'll be able to catch our breath, or that's when we're going to be happy. There's always going to be something else. You're always going to be dealing with something. And you just have to accept that and not look for like these external things. I mean, obviously, finally becoming profitable is definitely going to make you a lot happier than, <laughs> than when you're not. <laughs> but, but even that, you know, like where my business partner and I were at a band, I mean, he's like, you know, he's got real money being his own business. And, you know, I, I did pretty good in the bar business, not like, I mean, pretty comfortable life not like rich or anything but we were never looking to this like oh when's this finally gonna make money but um but yeah you just gotta there were, there were so many things where i was like oh as soon as we get this done then everything's gonna be okay and i just had this roller coaster ride of emotions and it became like really exhausting and stressful and then finally, I just finally, you know, just adapted this policy. Like, we're going to get things done and stuff's going to happen. And, you know, just uh, when things are bad, it's like, well, whatever. It could, you know, it could always be worse, you know. There's no <laughs> limit to human suffering. So let's just, let's just ride with it and see what happens. And, you know, just keep trying, trying to accomplish things and not get too wrapped up in it, you know. And All right. I think that's perfect advice. So cheers to that. All right. So, should we move on to our fifth and final question? Yes. Fifth and final drink. This is the chili pepper barrel. Oh, I can't wait. So this barrel, when I tried this, I was like, fuck, man. So this is this is what I like in a barrel. I mean, uh, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't drink this every day, but I don't want a barrel to drink every day because there's not enough of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's an unrepeatable flavor. And so uh, I, I originally offered this to a club and they, they passed on it. The barrel, I mean, it's like the barrel they picked is delicious. It was amazing. I can understand why. But then I ended up, um, uh, Liquor World got this one locally. And that was Matt Lilly is the buyer. And I've dealt with him for a long time since when he was, he was originally the buyer at uh, Total Wine. And he like changed everything. You know, we first got in uh, with our distributor you know, we are getting in a couple bars or whatever, and then he was like, oh, this is really good, and bought like 35 cases, you know? And so all of a sudden, it's like, and uh, doing, back in the day, I used to love going there and uh, doing casings, you know? And that was what I, I loved about this business as well. This is, a, sorry, <laughs> this is not about this barrel at all, but the bar business, you can't do anything. You know, if you advertise or promote, yes, you will make money immediately, but you've already, you're already caused the end of your of your business. It's already over. If you do that, yeah, you're gonna make money, but now it's over. You got about a year and a half left, and then hopefully you make it, you know, like a club, 
when they do that, they make enough money where they can tear the whole place down and redo it and give it a new name or whatever. But uh, you're just sitting there <laughs> waiting for people to show up. This, you know, when, when I first started doing this, the harder I would work, the more, it, like if I went to a tasting at Total One, I would sell their entire inventory while I was there, everything. And so it's like, you know, and then, when, you know, because manufacturing, when I'm in, when I'm here, I mean, granted, I don't do as much as I used to, but the harder you work, the more stuff happens. And so it's, and also it's always creative. All right, let's see how this guy. All right, cheers. Oh, man, that nose. I, that, the nose is nothing like a taste. I haven't had one in a while, so hopefully it's as good as, as I remember. Oh. Woo, yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's a woo. Woo. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so mm, it's got that long, lingering, oak, spicy finish. It's like a smoked jalapeno. You got me craving like jalapeno poppers now. Like I, I gotta <laughs> order some like South Mex food or something. Like it's just, wow. Like it, the tingle on the tongue is just amazing. Like it's just so. This is very similar to how this uncut blend I'm doing is, except the uncut blend has way more pepper and spice and is a little, little even though this is hotter, probably hotter. Yeah, this is a... Uh, well, I, I, I'm gonna, uh, we'll, we'll need to work something out because I'm gonna need a, like a bottle or a sample of that. Because so like <laughs> if it's hotter than this, like, I mean, that's, yeah. this is fucking gorgeous. Thank and, like, you. If it's, again, I mean, none of the bottles have been terrible. Like they, these are just, fucking amazing like they've all and they're all awesome. totally oh man yeah even if, oh, that that last sip I, it was like a little more balanced i got more sweetness up front yeah but yeah this was one of my two favorite barrels can can you tell me like the process to making this or is that like company secret or like oh this is just this is just a single barrel i just went and tried all these different barrels and this one tasted like this and i was like whoa i have never tasted that flavor before and so i i just i separated it from the rest and made sure it, went, it was offered as a oh, private barrel it's yeah amazing. i didn't do i mean that, again these are single barrels you know i didn't do shit. <laughs> well no I, I mean i i, I don't know you, like, you threw peppers in there or whatever but like, no, it, i didn't do any of that that's why it's so unique because it's same mash bill, laid down the same day as probably uh, 26 other barrels I offered, and this is the only one that has flare profile. It's got to come from the oak or something. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, it's the magic of the single barrel, you know? And um, but all I did was taste it and go, oh, that's, I like that. Yeah. No, that's this one's not being used for blending. That's about the extent of. <laughs> no, that's uh, that that is amazing. Like it literally, oh, it, it's got such a spice to it, but yet a flavor, and then that the, just the after, like the yeah. the slow burn at the end. It's just it's gorgeous. It really is. Like it. Thank you. No, it, like oh, and and it's not not blowing smoke up your ass because you're on the show it really is it, it is gorgeous like it, it is you. like it's i'm a big fan so it, it, yeah and it's changed in the glass you know i don't know if it's just like because every time you take a sip your you know saliva gets mixed in there and the proof yeah. comes down a little bit or if your palate gets acclimated to the heat but oh yeah, yeah this was absolutely it's better than i remember all right so our question five it's a flip of the coin question. So okay. Our last drink of the night, you don't have to answer it. It's just the coin will answer it for you. So I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble, but it's just you can flip it, you can spin it, you can do whatever you want. But question five is, is it true that the smoke wagon bottle design is based off of your body imprint after a crazy night of drinking <laughs> silver 
or drinking Russian vodka and waking up naked in the Nevada desert. Oh, let's see. Ah, <laughs> oh, boring. No. Fuck no. Oh, man. I wanted that one to be yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That would have been a great <laughs> boring. It's <laughs> not as exciting as everybody thought. <laughs> well, because I, I mean, I know the true story is that it's Nevada flowers, but it, it just, yeah. It, it's, yeah. It, I, I tried to come up with, again, our last question is just a good, just good night drink <laughs> kind of thing, but it just, it's always just, yeah. Right on. This thing is amazing. They're heavy as fuck. They're a good weapon. So, like, it, it's just, yeah. <laughs> well, Aaron, I want to say thank you so much. My pleasure. Us. It was an absolute fucking pleasure. <laughs> right on. Uh, yeah, I had a great time. And, and literally... Sorry for all the, all the computer dying and going to get a truck and... We don't even need to worry about that. But, like, I, I really... I hope someday you and I can drink person to person and like either Vegas or New York or wherever like I, I hope we can share some smoke wagon I, I do as well